All right, so remember when Nancy Pelosi infamously said that Congress must first pass the health care bill in order to find out what's in it? Well, tonight, I'm sorry to report that it seems that she was right. Now, according to Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, a number of provisions were hidden so deep inside this legislation that most members of Congress are still unaware of their existence. It is a staggering $105 billion in appropriations that were inserted into the bill at the last minute behind closed doors. Now, in this case, the traditional appropriations process was bypassed, meaning that more than 100 billion taxpayer dollars has already been sent to bureaucrats to fund this controversial bill. Now, by engaging in this deceitful process, Democrats like Nancy Pelosi ensured that regardless of the outcome of last November's elections, that the hands of Congress would be tied and Obamacare would be funded no matter what. And here to explain how this was even possible and what Republicans can do to roll it back is Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. You know, when I first heard this, I said, well, I, I couldn't even believe the story. It's so unbelievable because Republicans have been saying, all right, if we don't get the president to sign on board in the Senate, we're going to defund it. Right. So now you found out through the Congressional what, uh, Research Service. Congressional Research Service. There right. was a report that was issued oh. two weeks before the election. No one was really reading Congressional Research mm -hmm. reports. And then there was another report issued in February that detailed the $105 billion. And this is an enormous sum of money. Right, so $105 billion, $464 million. Mm -hmm. This was tucked away inside the Obamacare bill. People say, well, what's wrong with you members of Congress? Why didn't mm -hmm. you know it's there? It's because because we didn't get the bill until literally a couple of hours before we were supposed to vote on it, and it's 2,900 pages long. What they did is they took the bill, the, this amount of money, split it up and put it in different sections of the bill. Nobody knew until February when it came out. Uh, we had an eagle eye from the Heritage Foundation. Mm -hmm. Ernest Istook, a former member of Congress, right. found this in this report. He wrote a few blog posts. M one of my colleagues, Steve King from Iowa, also found out about it, this, and we've been trying to do everything Thing we can to alert people and say, give the money mm -hmm. back. Well, first of all, how breathtaking is it that that you can almost you can insert it in a three thousand page bill and lose one hundred and five billion dollars in the process and nobody picks up on? Well, it? I think this was intentional, don't you? Yeah, I mean, do you think that Harry like Reid this just like escaped his memory to tell the senators? Oh, by the way, if you vote for Obamacare, you're also voting for another hundred. Were they that billion pessimistic that December when they passed this that they'd lose? Well, I think I think they knew. I think this was intentional. I think that that's why I say Obama, Reid, and Pelosi they they uh, owe us an apology and an explanation. But they need to give the money back before. Th this is the good news. Um, the bad news is Obamacare is pre-funded for the next eight years. The implementation. We thought if we can't repeal it, at you least can defund yeah, it. yeah, at least we could defund so you're, you're it. You're telling now we people can't now that it. you cannot defund it. No, what, it's so done. You, so it's done. there's no way to remedy this? Yes, there is. That's right. the good news. Okay, now the good news is we've got this two-week continuing resolution. Government runs out of money on March 18th. This is what we propose. We've written language to add on to the next continuing re resolution that says, Obama, Pelosi, Reid, you give this money back. You didn't tell the American people. You didn't tell the Senate. You didn't tell the House. Give the money back, mm -hmm. and then we'll start talking about the budget. Is the, this is, is the first is thing. Is the leadership to... in agreement with you on this? In other words, will all the Republicans in the House hold the line, meaning you will shut down the government unless this money that they inserted to fund Obamacare is given back. Well, that's what we're going to talk about this week when we go back to Washington, D.C. I just want to encourage your listeners, you can go to my, my, either my website, Michelle Bachman, or right. my Facebook site. We're going to have regular updates, so go, go there for regular updates. Have you but spoken to the leadership about it? I have spoken to, to the leadership, and uh, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow at 5.30 at the Capitol to explain. A lot of members don't even know about this yet, mm -hmm. th this outrage. Now, so also we're you found out that it. Kathleen Sebelius has, what, a $16 yes, billion dollar slush fund? Oh, this is incredible. That's Section cool. 402 of the bill. She has a $16 billion dollar a slush, slush fund. fund. That means she can do whatever she wants with this money. She can reach in, tap it, spend it any way she wants. $16 billion? Oh, dollars? it gets worse than that, Sean. In Section 1311A, she has the right to an unlimited tap on the Treasury Department. So if, let's say, California that's in a financial mess, they can call her up and say, guess what? We need more money to put in these private health exchanges. Maybe, oh, $30 billion. She can say sure thing without coming back to Congress. I thought she Congress can appropriate appropriated the money. money. So they're, they're I saying did that too. They so did the Constitution. So the, but where, where, where do they get the idea that they can 
appropriate unlimited amounts of money. That's unconstitutional. They gave themselves that authority. In my mind, that's unconstitutional. I just For, can't believe nobody picked oh, up on this. Oh, it's unbelievable. Well, why do you think Speaker Pelosi wouldn't let us read the bill? Why do you think Harry Reid wouldn't give the senators the bill until just hours ahead of time? Remember, not one Republican voted for Obamacare in the senator right. house. Only Democrats did. We're running out of time, and I've got to ask you a political question, because you are considering a run for the presidency. Well, I haven't made a decision if I will, and I haven't made a decision if I won't. All right, but that means you, you are considering it. I'm not, I'm not trying to press you, but if, right. if you're not saying yes or no, that means you're thinking about it. So. I'm, I'm going to these early primary states because right. these issues are so important. I, I want to make sure that in the midst of looking at all the candidates, we aren't forgetting the issues. I'm getting people who are encouraging me to make the decision, but I haven't made a decision. Okay, but you, uh, let me see if I can ask it another way. You are <laughs> thinking about it. Well, it, it, it is something, like I said... I haven't decided to, and I haven't decided not to. You know, to. I interview a lot of Democrats, and you, 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 <laughs> I'm not being that, cute here. No, I'm telling I know. you, this is what I'm worried this about is right what now. You're but again, you know, people can go to my Facebook site, go to my website, mm -hmm. get regular updates. But this is huge. Tell them to give the money back. And the good right. news is, we can undo Obamacare, but we've got less than two weeks to get the money back. Let's All do right. it now. Uh, Congresswoman, good to see you. Welcome uh, to you. New York, and welcome to the studio. And